relaxed openness, easeful relating, open-heartedness. This is the natural quality of open intelligence. Now we use the word open intelligence to define our human intelligence. You know, it's important to know what open intelligence is. It's very easy to identify what open intelligence is. When we stop thinking for a moment, boom, there it is. Your power to know is open intelligence. This open intelligence is the same intelligence running everything, running the show. And, and we experience open intelligence through data. All of our thoughts, emotions, sensations, they're inseparable from this open intelligence. Like the reflections in a crystal ball are inseparable from the crystal ball itself. They're not two different things. The images in a crystal ball do not have an independent nature other than the crystal ball. And the same is true with all of our, anything we think, anything we feel, anything we know or don't know, completely inseparable from your power to know. So most of us have been giving or attributing power to our data streams, you know, saying that Thoughts are either positive or negative. Emotions are either positive or negative or in between. And the same with physical sensations. So our whole lives we've been emphasizing data. We've been looking for well-being. We've been looking for openness and relationship. We've been looking for approval, security, whatever it might be from the descriptions of the data streams. I mean, we can all identify that in our experience right now. You know, we all have specific data streams that we're either indulging, avoiding, or replacing. And the practice and balance view, which is so profound, is short moments of letting everything be as it is until open intelligence becomes primary in your experience at all times, where the data streams are no longer running your life, so to speak. You're not trying to rearrange the appearances of data in order to to live fully. And we begin to live from this open intelligence vantage, having a broad, balanced view, which is your power to know. So short moments are so profound when you just, you know, just tap into open intelligence, recognize open intelligence, and rest. All the data are already at rest. Even if it feels tense, and uptight, it's still already at rest. And it just takes some time to notice this. You know, you can do it in each short moment. What, what are you thinking now? You know, is it, is it an angry thought? Is it a jealous thought? Is it a thought that I'll never get it? Or is it a thought that there's something wrong about me or wrong about them? Or is it irritation? Or is it intense desire? Whatever that description is, you know, where is it right now? Can you pinpoint it? Can, can you really describe it as having some, substantial, some substantiality? It's just like pure space. Pure space, relaxed, wide open. This is what you find in each short moment. When you take short moments repeatedly throughout your day, it gets easier to take these short moments. It becomes easier to allow everything to be as it is. We stop making ourselves wrong. We stop making other people wrong in these short moments until there's a point where you're never making anyone wrong. It doesn't mean you become passive and you allow anything to happen. You know, first, we have to take responsibility for our own data. Short moments, whenever you experience any data you feel you need to indulge, avoid, or replace. The word was used reactivity, reactive, shutting down. We have a choice. You know, when we come to Balance You, we make this commitment to take responsibility for our data streams because we don't want to live a life anymore based on descriptions. We want to go right to the source, open-hearted, easeful, potent relating. So we make that commitment moment by moment. 
if we find we're indulging in something, making it into something, giving it a definite meaning other than relaxed openness, then that's indulging in it. If we find that there's something we don't like about our conduct or the way we're working with people, you know, the, the tendency is to either try to replace that with something more positive, or we just don't allow ourselves to feel it completely. You know, sadness or shutting down, we, do, we don't want to feel it. But in this balance you setting, we were given the permission to feel everything fully, but there's a definite difference between indulging in that. You know, if you're feeling depression fully, you don't want to continue making a story about how all the reasons why you're depressed. You know, so it takes some practice to distinguish when am I indulging and when am I just letting it be as it is. I'm just sharing from experience that that became more and more obvious when I was indulging in something versus letting it be as it is. And ju you just test it moment by moment when you're working together in service I mean, if you're taking responsibility for any data streams that come up, whether it's unworthiness or jealousy or you know, whatever it is, you know, you have a choice. You can, if you lash out and react, then, you know, that's going against the commitment to let it be as it is. So you know, sometimes it requires holding our tongue and not reacting as intense as it might feel, bubbling up, and you just feel you can't control that outburst. You just need to commit to it and work with your trainer to find ways where you will not react in a certain way. You know, it's relying on open intelligence provides a deep discernment. It's not an excuse to let, you know, anything happen. If it's harmful to another person or if it's not of benefit to another person, don't do it. And then rest with all the data that come up about, well, why shouldn't I do it? Isn't it all open intelligence anyway? And isn't it only beneficial? I mean, relying on open intelligence, you just naturally have discernment. You naturally come to this place of knowing what to say, what to do. But it takes practice, because our whole lives we've been reifying all of our data. And you know, the trainers have spent time practicing this up and making it their 100% commitment to support many, many people in gaining confidence and open intelligence as the top priority. But all of us here, whether we're trainers or not, you know, that's, we wouldn't be here if that wasn't our interest to really live this Four Mainstays lifestyle and share it with others. You know, everyone in this room is obviously tired of a life of negativity or ups and downs. You know, we're looking for open-heartedness no matter what we're experiencing. You know, that you can experience everything that's going on in the world today with an open heart. It doesn't mean that you don't have any feelings or that you have any ideas of ways to improve things. But it means that we want to be that demonstration of somebody relying on open intelligence, not our data. And it's hard to predict how that's going to look in your life. So rather than trying to make predictions of, well, if I was relying on the Four Mainstays fully, I would look this way. You know, your experience as it is, is all you have. So we don't have to try to cultivate or fake our way into any of the any of these ways of relating. You know, we can be natural and yeah, if anything's difficult, you have a trainer to rely on, you have the training media to listen to to help clarify things. You have the community. So again, we don't come here bringing loads of points of view or data in and expect the community to listen to all of that and then either agree with us or not agree. It's a much different commitment here. It's like if you don't like the way things are running, so, you know, what is the solution do you see? Keeping in mind what will be of most benefit 
to myself, but many people as well. If something I'm doing is a benefit to me, but nobody else, you know, have a look at that. And it'll start to become more and more obvious. I mean, I had many habits and ways of relating when I came to the training that are completely outshone now, that are just not part of my... I don't think the same way, I don't act the same way, I don't speak the same way. But it's more about a demonstration. And you can use any words, really, to describe how do you feel more and more open-hearted? How do you feel that there's more skillful means? How can you express you know, a genuine care and love for another person? You don't have to use exactly the same terminology. But what we're doing here is providing a standardized education in the nature of mind so that everyone can get it. Not about trademarking a new language style or anything like that. The trainings are very responsive. They're open and flexible. So you know that the language is very simple. Open intelligence. It's open, it's free, it's intelligent. And there's data, you know, units, just information. Data are just like, you know, have you ever seen the Matrix movie where the zeros and ones are trickling down on the screen? But yet, look how lively it all is and how colorful and how amazing. But it's imbued with open intelligence. It is op- the, the display of open intelligence. But we've mistaken the data to be positive, negative, and neutral other energies. That it somehow has its own independent nature existing on its own in this multiverse. And the more you rely on short moments, the more that concept just drifts away. It's just not even noticed anymore. So the next step for everyone really is to continue gaining full confidence in open intelligence, like I said, where open intelligence is primary at all times. The data, they don't go anywhere, but they're just not distracting anymore. They're no longer running the show. You can still experience anything, desire, jealousy, irritation, whatever it might be. But after a while, you just won't notice any of that, and you'll just notice solutions, how much you care for one another, regardless of what they say or what they do. You'll see beneficial, skillful means. You know, all this. I mean, you're already all recognizing this anyway. So rather than focus on how far you have to go where open intelligence is primary at all times, recognize how far you've come. I mean, look at your life one year ago, two years ago, six years ago different person, in a way. But you still have all of the same preferences, you look pretty much the same, except you're much brighter and clearer and happier, most of the time. If you've been in the trainings with trainers for a while, maybe it brings up some data and you don't feel so happy. That's fine. That's not an indication of something wrong with you or that... You know, that unhappiness is open intelligence. We just relax the description. Oh, I'm unhappy. Oh, I'm unhappy. Oh, I'm unhappy. You relax focusing on that. And then it just is like, wow, there's this energy. Maybe it doesn't feel so nice. It's uncomfortable. But what is it when I leave it just as it is? Then you start to understand the beneficial aspect of all data. At first, data, they're like an old and dear friend, or maybe they're not so dear. Oh, there's that one again. We commit to letting it be as it is, and at some point, it's just not that enemy anymore. So that's why we train up together. It doesn't happen overnight. You know, I've not met anyone that it happened overnight for. Slow and real. Slow and real. But it's not that slow. Like I said, I mean, just a few years and you're completely transformed. One simple change in the use of your mind, you're totally transformed. 